My name is Uche Agata. I play Giannis Antetokounmpo in the film Rise. Um, I play uh, someone who discovers basketball with, for the first time with his older brother and isn't very good at first, but eventually works on his craft, gets there, and then has a, a potential the, uh, to get to the NBA and the opportunity to do so. Uh, I'm Raul Agata. I play Thanasis Antetokounmpo. And uh, Thanasis is a character who's a loving big brother who wants to do right by his family. And he's, I'm playing him at a time where Giannis has not really found his footing yet. And this is a time when Thanasis is still the best player in the family, at least in the beginning. So like, he's just like uh, everybody's favorite big brother, man. Like, I don't know who would want him as a big brother. So I play, yeah, he's just a really good brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the relationship between uh, Ra and I is uh, similar in the fact that uh, we both want the best for each other. We both uh, want to push each other and see each other do great things. And we definitely just want to see each other uh, succeed. Yeah, man, I agree. Uh, the brothers in the movie, they always have each other's backs. And it's the same way with us. That's how we were raised. This being with this guy makes it a whole lot easier because like that's one part that I don't have to really worry about. Like I can worry about the others, the other technicalities, but the relationship with the Nat with Giannis, that's that was something that I never really had to worry about because it was always real. Uh the experience uh filming a movie for the first time was that definitely interesting. You learned a lot about movies that you would have never known if you didn't shoot one. Uh, I definitely had an incredible time. And uh, like Ralph said, working with each other definitely played a big part in uh, being comfortable in front of the camera as well. I think, well, probably the dialect. I think that was that by far the hardest part to learn because it's something totally different that you don't really hear a lot, at least where we're from. Like a Greek accent. I mean, it's more of an Afro-Greek accent, but it was something extremely foreign to me, but with a lot of repetition, I figured it out, and so did he. Honestly, I'd have to say the same thing. The most difficult part, um, uh, the most difficult part about playing the character was just the, the accent and really, really working with it and trying to uh, make it sound, you know, real and authentic. And uh, they were so kind and they had nothing but great things to say. They were happy about, happy with the way that we, portrayed them so that was by far the most important thing to me that the actual guy is happy to see what he sees because nobody wants to watch a movie and then be like about their lives and then be like yo what is this this is not what I told you <laughs> that would be that would be a disaster but they, they were so happy with it and that that really made my day when Raul and I met Giannis and Thanasis for the first time it was definitely uh very the we had a very good conversation they had very nice things to say. They were they were very proud of uh, the work that they saw, and that meant a lot to us. Seeing ourselves in the seeing myself in a movie for the first time was definitely weird. I always wondered what I would look like in front of a prof like a professional movie camera, and then I, I got to see it, and it was I don't know, it was a little surreal. It was just like what I don't know. It was it was weird. It was weird, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, seeing myself in a movie for the first time, it was surreal and kind of crazy like i didn't before this i had never even thought about acting so seeing myself on a, the big screen like with the in a disney movie it's wild uh after making this film it's 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 like i've got the acting bug now it's i definitely want to do it as much for as long as i can and for as much as i can man it's it's a new passion for me. I have to agree. After making this film, it was one of the most, one of the greatest experiences I have ever had in my entire life. Uh, I can't seem to stop wanting to do it. You know, I, I'm continuing to work on my on my craft and get better. And uh, I can't wait for the next project to come out. Well, I play Charles Antetokounmpo. He's the father of Giannis and Alex and Costas and Thanasis and Francis Adetokounmpo, and he's married to Yeti Adetokounmpo. Veronica. <laughs> Veronica, I was almost there. I almost, almost made it. it. Married to Veronica Adetokounmpo. 
and um you know he's the father of this family you know and you know he's a you know, the, the partner to yeti day and they are this this dynamic duo that raised some incredibly exceptional individuals and you know he's of nigerian descent found himself in greece on the streets and you know had to provide for his family and had to you know instill in his family that um with hard work perseverance and faith anything you want in life can be achieved you know and you don't do it on your own you do it with your family your family is the wind uh, beneath your sails so that's why i play charles antetokounmpo and i play veronica adetokounmpo uh, who I like to call the Queen of Kings um, and the Mother of Kings. Um, and she is also Nigerian, um, makes that treacherous journey along with Charles to search for a better life um, for herself and her family. Um, and she has this unwavering faith in the dream of a better life for this family, something that she leans wholeheartedly into um, while she is struggling to help the family survive in any which way that she can. Um, and it's, uh, she is a large part of maintaining that faith um, with this wonderful family of kings and queens. In terms of similarity to Charles and myself, uh, other than the fact that we're both Nigerian and we're both immigrants, um, I'm nowhere near as calm or cool or collected as he is. You know, Charles was somebody who was always, you know, incredibly poised under pressure. Um, I freak out constantly <laughs> about life and about everything. Um, but I wish to be more like Charles. You know, um, I'm not a father yet. You know, I hope to be a father someday. And, and if I can be half the kind of father that he was, just from the stories that I've heard from his sons and from, from Veronica as well, um, man, that's a victory. That would be a victory. Um, I'm just also happy that he got, you know, lived to see his son make it to the NBA. So yeah, I would say I'm similar in that, you know, I'm Nigerian, I'm a bit ambitious. He was very ambitious for his family, um, but definitely we vary in temperament. Mm -hmm. So how similar am I to the character of uh, Veronica de Um There are many ways that I wish we were similar. <laughs> uh, there are many ways that she inspires me in, in you know, in her belief um, and in her faith and her audacity and dreaming. Um, but there are many differences. Um, so in playing the character, there are many uh, different parts that I had to study <laughs> a little more to um, properly portray. Um, I'm also not a mother yet, uh, though the film gave me the opportunity to have many children in different stages of the Edetokumbo brothers' lives. Um, like I said, I feel like the woman in the shoe. Yeah. And all the children and didn't know what to do. Um, and uh, I do share with Veronica the fact that we're both Nigerian immigrants. Um, and I do share the, um, the love of a dream. But there was quite a journey in, in embodying the other parts of this incredible woman. Well, physically, the biggest challenge I had in playing Charles <laughs> was a scene we had in the rain when I'm teaching <laughs> Rylan Uche, Giannis and Thanasis how to play basketball, was without a doubt the coldest day <laughs> on earth ever recorded in mm -hmm. Athens. And the water that the fake rain they had falling on us was also like extremely cold. Mm -hmm. I still have PTSD about it till today. Um, but yeah, that was a very physically tough scene to film. I feel like I was dying of hypothermia. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of challenging with, um, with playing Charles more emotionally, um, just having to relive some of those things, you know, you know, there's a lot of fear, you know, in, in those scenes, the fear of losing your family, the fear of not living up to your potential as a man or as a father or as a husband. You know, men pride themselves on being able to provide for their families. And so the, the moment there's a chink in that, there's also a chink in your in your armor, you know, and, and yeah, going to vulnerable places like that, um, 
can be quite tough. Honestly, it can be quite tough. Um, yeah, it definitely gives you weird nightmares. You don't really want to be in that headspace too long. I, I, I don't. But, mm -hmm. So I'll say those two were mm -hmm. as challenging as it got. So it's a very much a fire and ice thing. Yeah. Because that for me, the most uh, challenging physically <laughs> was a hot day. The heat. In Athens. The heat. A very, very hot day. And actually, um, <laughs> it, was, it was the scene that we were uh, running from... Um, from the cops. Mm. And I'm not sure if you knew this, or, uh, but there was a point where, you know, we're running and I'm, you know, I have the, um, uh, you know, I'm carrying Costas. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I fell. Mm, yeah. But what I was told was people said, wait, are you sure you're not a mother? Because apparently the fall that I did yeah. was immediately there was that point where you have make a decision. I can protect this my child. body or protect this child. Yeah. And there was not there was not a moment. Yeah. Um, and so physically, they, I mean, they tried to do Elmer's glue and all of that, but, yeah. <laughs> but trying to make sure that was hidden yeah. uh, after it was, uh, was a little more difficult. And so it was a hot, hot day in Athens. Um, but on, on the emotional side, I would definitely say it's the scene where um, Veronica talks about um, having to leave Francis um and trying to make that choice and that decision and and the ramifications of that and wondering if you know they did the right thing um in in working towards that dream for the entire family um in having to take this very painful uh decision um, and it, you know, as you do in film, you do it over and over and you do it from each side and you get your coverage. Um, and like you said, that headspace, that can be difficult to, to exist within. So I would say those were the two most difficult uh, moments for me. Prior to shooting the movie, I knew quite a bit about Giannis. I'm a big basketball fan. You know, I definitely followed the NBA draft every year. The year he was drafted, there was all this rumbling about who's this, you know, six foot 11 guy coming out of Greece that's built like a Greek god and moves like a point guard and can shoot and all these crazy things. And um, and nobody had heard about him. You know, he, he didn't play basketball for a very long time. He didn't play, you know, in high school or at the collegiate level. So he was a sensation right out the gate. And then hearing that he was, you know, of Nigerian descent definitely piqued my interest. You know, there's not too many Nigerians running around the NBA. So I definitely followed his career. Uh, quite a bit before the movie happened. But obviously, in getting to make the movie, you learn more details about the family and, um, you know, specific uh, details about their life in Nigeria before they came to Greece, their life in Greece, and the incredible trials and tribulations they had to overcome to, to make their dreams come true. Yeah. And at the beginning of making this film, I knew of Giannis Adetokounmpo. I um, knew of him in you know, the NBA, but um, reading the script, there was a moment where I had to go back and do a little research and go, wait, how much of this can, can be real? Because it was so such a spectacular uh, story. Um, and so that has been part of the joy of the journey is, is being able to uh, learn more about the family, learn about Veronica, uh, Veronica and Charles and, you know, and on all of the, the Adetokumbo kings um, and learning about their time in Greece, uh, that journey that they had to make, um, that perilous journey um, to search for a better life and to follow their dreams. Um, so making Rise has been a large part of learning even more about this incredible family story. Do you start with Aki Where do you start with Aki, Aki Omoto Show? And I, I've said this before. While shooting this movie in, in Athens, Greece, I never saw Aki lose his temper at one mm. time or be, you know, be belligerent to anyone or talk down to anyone. This guy, cool as a cucumber and very precise on what he wants mm. and very much an actor's director. 
you know, he's one of us. He used to be an actor as well. So he speaks our language and he knows how to facilitate our needs on a movie set. Mm -hmm. And he just knows how to create a great environment. You know, never lose sight of the fact that this is this is filmmaking. This should be entertaining. This should be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes actors, we really go into our little world and, you know, we want to recreate everything and live it to the fullest. But you also have to think of yourself, Yeti, as the actress, Dio as the actor, and and embrace the fact that this is a movie. You're having fun. Never, never lose the fun of it. So, you know, his motto on set was always lead with love, you know, was what he would say all the time. And that was speaking to our characters, Charles and and Veronica leading with love within the family, as well as Dio and Yeti Ye Day on set leading with love yeah. with our fellow castmates. Wait, Akin is amazing, man. I mean, mm. it's great. Oh. Akin no Motosho is, I think, one of the best directors I've ever worked with. And this film was the perfect storm for him in that this is a man that he's been an actor before, so he knows how to communicate with us actors. He's played basketball before, basketball. so he knows the basketball world. Mm -hmm. And he spoke to this dream that he'd had yeah. of if he ever made a sports film, it would be a Giannis film. And so, you know, you he had all of these areas of expertise that came together along with that passion side for the story that was being told. Um, uh, you know, that was evident from the moment he stepped onto the set. And like Dio has said before, um, he, Akin always reminded us to lead with love. Yeah. Always did. And he was able to have this singular vision but make sure that everybody felt heard. It was a truly collaborative set and everybody felt like they could do their best work in that moment um, because he left it, uh, he, he created such a beautiful space. Um, so, I, I mean, I can't sing Aking's praises enough. Aking, if you watch this, I hail you pass. I hail you pass. I hail you pass. <laughs> Man, I, I want audiences to walk out of this film just feeling inspired, just feeling like whatever it is that they're going through, the hardships that they're going through on their their hero's journey to their dreams um, are obstacles that they can and will overcome if they just persevere. And if also they can, you know, realize that no one, you know, defeats a giant like that on their own, you know. Um, that's what family is there for. That's what friends is there for. That's why community is so important. Um, and also the idea that, you know, um, we need to be more accommodating. We need to be more tolerant. You know, I think the world is becoming very, um, you know, becoming very nationalistic in its ideologies and very xenophobic. And we need to return to a time when we actually looked out for our brothers and sisters. We looked out for our neighbors. We looked out for our you know, immigrants coming into into the country um, because they're really coming to to add to this country. They're coming to add to a community as opposed to coming to take. So yeah, I just want the movie to reorient people's minds around the idea of migration, mm -hmm. as well as um, the power of family, the power of hard work and fortitude. Dreams do come true. Mm. Yeah, I would hope that when people watch this movie, um, that they start having those conversations those conversations about migration, those conversations about um, documented versus undocumented immigrants, those conversations about refugees. Um, I would hope that in the celebration of family that viewers have in watching this, that they would extend that further how much further can you extend that idea of family beyond the immediate nuclear one, beyond the immediate cultural one, beyond the immediate national one? Human. <laughs> A human family. I would, you know, I would hope that people would take the time to really look at that. Um, and I would hope that viewers would be left with that message of, of dreaming. Being inspired. Being inspired. 
Um, leaning into hope, leaning into faith, especially in the most troubled of times. Um, seeing that light, um, even when it's not presented in the moment, I, I would hope that people would lean into their dreams. The biggest challenges for me in making the film had to do with what we all were going through at the time, or continue to go through, but at least at that time, definitely a much more uh, severe version was navigating the pandemic. I think like everyone else in the world, you have to, want, everybody had to sort of pivot in different ways and the film industry was no different. Um, you know, by the time we shot Rise, a few other films had been shot. So a lot of the protocols and a lot of the, you know, um, uh, a lot of the a lot of the ways in which it was now possible. You must remember this is before vaccinations and so on. So I would say those were the challenges uh, navigating that in terms of making the film. Every day for me was 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 a dream because this was a film I dreamed of making for so long. So I couldn't. I wake up every morning and just be like smiling, and I couldn't believe that I had this opportunity to work with this great team to tell this great story and bring it to the people. What I would say to someone who wasn't a basketball fan to get them to see the film was that the film is an emotional story. It's more than a basketball story, which is which is which is why when you tell people the story of this this unlikely story of this family who left one country, Nigeria, and went to another in Greece in search of a better life, through no fault of their own, had to live um, you know, under the fear of police raising these boys who ultimately go on and become champions. Um, it's an incredible story. It has a lot to say about life um, and what life means and what can happen when you overcome and you just have faith and belief and you can overcome your present circumstances. Um, and basketball is just the two. I would be very interested in um, making a sequel that started <laughs> where this film ends. Rise 2, anybody? I hope audiences take away um, the sense of family, the sense of faith, the sense of staying together and and uh, just belief, you know? When I read the story, when I read the script, when I read the story, I was moved. When I read the script, I cried and I hope and I felt that sense of joy and inspiration and, and really as a filmmaker and a storyteller and us on the team bringing rise to Disney Plus June 24th, we really hope you all feel the same, that we made this film with love and we, 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 we present it to you with love. And we hope that that love enters your heart, sprinkles the world, you know? Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful story.